Now we can post-process the cell center values of the primary unknowns to produce useful visualizations. Instead of double-clicking on Results in the Workbench window, we will double-click on Solution to reopen Fluent. Post-processing can be performed inside the Fluent interface, while the Results step uses CFD Posts, an alternative and older post-processor. Once Fluent opens, we first want to look at a full 2D representation of our flow domain. This will make the other visualizations much clearer. To do this, select the View tab in the top bar, and on the left, click Views. In the new window, in the Mirror Planes option, Select Axis, and click Apply to update the view. We can then close this window. We can see that this has mirrored the domain across the symmetry axis. This will make it easier to interpret the later visualizations. On the left side of the window, click the Fit to Window button to place this in the center of the screen. Next, we want to look at the velocity vectors, as they are intuitive to visualize. From the Results tab, click Vectors, and select New. In the pop-up window, Name this Velocity Vectors. Ensure Vectors of is set to Velocity, and change Color by to be Mach Number instead of Velocity Magnitude. Ensure no surfaces are selected in the list, and click Save Slash Display to view it. You can then close this window. We can see that the flow generally follows the path we expect. It starts subsonic, and speeds up as it travels through the nozzle, before reaching nearly Mach 3 at the exit. We can also see how the flow curves near the edges of the flow, while the flow near the center remains fairly straight. While we can easily approximate the flow to be one-dimensional near the center, that approximation breaks down near the edges. Next, we can look at contours of static pressure. In the Results tab, Click Contours, and select New. In the pop-up window, name this Pressure Contours. Ensure that contours of pressure are selected, and that it is set to Static Pressure. Again, ensure no surfaces are selected, and click Save Slash Display to view. You can then close the window. We can see that the pressure decreases along the nozzle, starting at a high pressure inlet value that drives the flow to the pressure outlet. The transition between pressure regions is very gradual indicating that there are no shocks in the flow domain. Additionally, as we move from the top to the bottom of the nozzle, we can see that, especially near the throat, there are small variations along the cross-section. This is a key difference from our analytical quasi-1D model shown in pre-analysis. Similarly, we can look at contours of total pressure. 
create a new contour plot as before by selecting Contours in the Results tab and clicking New. Name this Total Pressure Contours. Under Contours of Pressure, change it to Total Pressure. Again, with no surfaces selected, click Save Slash Display to view and close the window. We can see that the total pressure is nearly constant across the flow domain and equal to the inlet boundary condition. This makes sense because no external work is being done on the fluid and the process is adiabatic. There's a small amount of variation near the edges at the exit of the nozzle. This is a result of numerical error that can be reduced with mesh refinement. Along with this, we can look at contours of temperature. Create a new contour plot as before. Name this Temp Contours. Change Contours of to be Temperature. And make sure Static Temperature is selected. And click Save Slash Display to view. And close the window. We can see that the temperature decreases along the nozzle. This is similar to the pressure contours, and this relationship makes sense from the ideal gas law. We can similarly look at contours of total temperature. Create a new contour plot as before. Name this total temp contours. With contours of set to temperature, change static temperature to total temperature. Click save slash display to view and close the window. As with the total pressure, we can see that the total temperature is nearly constant across the domain as expected and it is equal to the inlet boundary condition. This is a useful check on conservation of energy. There are, again, small errors near the exit of the nozzle, but looking at the legend, we can see that these variations are very small. 